Hi guys, it's your girl Shanice. And if you're new here, make sure you're hitting the subscribe button. And if you are already a subscriber, make sure that you are liking and sharing these videos so that your other friends can be blessed. It's always good to be able to come on here and share with you guys. I'm going to actually be talking today about our latest You All of World specials, um, season eight, phase two. <laughs> Um, with the man of God, Pastor Chris Oyakilome. So if you are new, you may never have heard of this program, but this is something that um, the man of God, Pastor Chris, has been doing since right around the pandemic, I would say. Um, and it's grown from there, and we've had so many amazing episodes and so many um, great things. We've learned so many great things from the man of God, Pastor Chris. So I'm just going to be summarizing what I took away from these last three days that we just had with the man of God. And if I didn't say something that you felt was really necessary to talk about, make sure you're putting it in the comment section so that anyone who comes across this video can be blessed by your insights as well. So I'm just going to talk about key takeaways. Obviously, there's so much that happens, you know, um, each episode or each day with the man of God is, you know, at least three hours around there. And um, we had three days this time around. So I cannot summarize everything in one video, um, but I'm going to do my best. And for those of you who want to watch a rebroadcast, I know it's already up on the Pastor Chris Digital Library app. So you can always just get that. Um, it's free from the Love World app store. You can download it. Um, and you know see what was shared live um, but it'll obviously be a rebroadcast now day one uh, I think the main thing that I took away from day one was to watch and pray you know um, pastor talked about looking at things from the lens of the word instead of just from our own human understanding or from you know what you see and the news that you're giving look at it from the lens of the word and you know he shared from first timothy chapter 2 um from verses 1 and he you know continued to go into um verses 2 of that chapter and even later on i don't want to spoil anything but he does keep you know addressing what paul told to timothy in um first timothy chapter 2 which is that we should pray first and foremost you know, and he tells us to pray for our leaders so that we can have a peaceable and quiet life, a peaceable world. You know, and he points out, you know, um, in Luke 18, verse 1, where the Lord Jesus tells us that we should always pray without giving up. You know, um, so this is the world that God wants for us. It's one where we're praying and the world is, is peaceful. You know, and we, we see in Philippians 4 verse 9 that the God of peace is with us when we do his will, right? And do things that the way we're supposed to do. Um, and, you know, he, he talks about the fact that above all else, we need to pray. And we do a lot of praying, you know, um, we always do a lot of praying. So even within that Your Love World special episode, you know, we have a time of prayer. So day two, you know, pastor talks about not letting yourself be deceived, you know, do not be deceived. And he talked about how in Acts 23 from verses six to seven, Paul is having to deal with dissension between the Sadducees who, um, they're, they're these free thinkers that don't believe in the supernatural. They don't believe in God. And then, um, you also have on the other hand, the Pharisees who do. And, you know, he points out how the devil deceived Eve in Genesis 3, you know, um, claiming that God had lied to her. You know, he knew what God said to her. He knew what he was doing, but he still tried to deceive her by twisting things around, right? Um, and then we find out in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verses 6 to 13, if you study in the AMPC and NIV version, we see that we are to know and speak the wisdom of God because he's revealed it to us through his spirit. So we have the ability to think like God. Remember, we're supposed to be imitators of Christ if you look in Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 1. So we have to think differently. You know, if you think like the world, you're going to have the results of the world, which is failure and death. 
you know you think about the world you live in it's a world that's run on debt really and if that's what you want to be a debtor then you can follow those principles that you've learned because the world tells you save your money save your money save your money and then you know it's like what's all that saving for how how are you getting any increase right and then in on the other hand you have god who tells you to give and i will give you know give to you you know abundantly so there's different principles what the world tells you is wise is not the wisdom of god and so you have to choose to do what the word says so that you have god's results rather than going and doing the results of the world which will give you the world results which as you can see always ends up in nothing um so you remember in first john chapter four we see that we've overcome the world because great is he that's in us you know um so you have to pastor said towards the end of it he said something that i want to i want to almost quote for you but i'm not going to use these exact words he said that we should get ready for the creativity and visionary and innovative power that's in our spirit because it's going to burst forth from us now day three was just so 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 loaded i could sit here and talk and talk and talk and i don't know that i can get into every single thing that was shared from day three um you know this was the grand finale right of this phase so ultimately pastor once again shares from first timothy chapter two you know and he points out that one god wants salvation for everyone and two he wants everyone to come to the knowledge of the truth of the word you know so he points out that the praying in these chapters uh in this chapter in these verses is an instruction that he's giving to us he's instructed us to pray it's just a clear instruction it's not about whether you like these leaders that you're supposed to pray for it's not about whether you like your next door neighbor or you like whoever you're supposed to pray for it's not about that it's just about doing the word instruction is our lives remember in proverbs we find that out um, this is just me telling you, you know, instructing that that's what was coming to my mind as Pastor was sharing because he was trying to share that instruction is not about how you feel, it's about doing the instruction, you know. And so, Pastor points out that at the end of the day, we're supposed to treat our enemies well, we're supposed to pray for them, we're not supposed to take vengeance against them. Vengeance is the Lord's, we're not, we're not doing that, we're not doing that. You know, so you let God take care of it. We also see that in Pro in Romans chapter 12 from verse 17 to 21. And then, you know, he also shows us other places where, you know, we have instruction in different roles and different capacities. So, for instance, in Ephesians 5 verse 25, we see that husbands are supposed to love their wives like the, the Lord Jesus loves the church. And then in Titus 2 from verse 1 to 4, we see that older women are supposed to teach younger women good things so that they can be fond of their husbands and love their husbands and then in ephesians chapter 6 from verse 1 to 2 we see that children have the the role to obey their their um their parents and honor them you know so we have to pray for all men we don't get to choose who we pray for we just have to do as god has instructed and you know there's something that pastor he always quotes um john wesley um, and you know that that quote that um, he says it seems God would not do anything or it seems God God would do nothing unless men pray right and so pastor priest points out that he actually agrees with this he agrees with this quote from John Wesley and I've talked about this quote before and you know pastor actually breaks down he brings up several times when innocent people die because no one intercedes you know and he points out what was different? Where was a time when an innocent person was supposed to die but didn't? What was the difference there? It was because the church prayed. You remember? The church prayed. So this is this is what happens. If we don't pray, we're not going to see God intervene. God wants us to pray so that he can now intervene and do as we're asking him to. You yeah? know? And so that's why he says, first of all, prayers and supplications should be made. Because that's how we get that supernatural intervention, all right? And Pastor points out, you know, some evil kings in the Bible who still, even after all that they did to God, were still able to go to God and gain forgiveness, gain mercy when they humbled themselves to Christ or to God, I'm sorry. So 
I mean, the Lord Jesus is God, so. But for context, you know, we know we're talking about God the Father. So he talks about, you know, King Ahab, King Manasseh, and, you know, he goes on from there, you know. Um, but the point is that people were praying for, um, for others. And that's how we see God intercede because you know that the hearts of men are in God's hands. So he can, he can take this horrible king and have a, make that person have a change of heart. That's what our prayers can do. So never think that your prayers are in vain. You know, um, and Pastor points out that in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 16, Paul had been praying for the, um, for the Ephesians to have the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Christ so that they can have insight into mysteries and secrets that have been granted to us in Christ, right? So Pastor said that this is a prayer that we can say and proclaim over ourselves too. It's not just for that church in Ephesus. You can personalize that prayer. You can use that as faith proclamations too. You remember, and you know that we've been sent to pronounce peace to our world. Our words are very important. They have power. So in Luke 10 from verse um, from verse 1, you know, you can read all the way to 7. The Lord Jesus saw, told them to pronounce their peace upon the houses that they go to. So just like you and I can pronounce peace to our nation. Peace to our countries. Wherever you live, wherever you are, you can pronounce peace. And we need peace right now in this world. This world is in a crisis. We need peace. We need God's people to be praying more than ever before. Know and use the wisdom of God. Look through, look at situations through the wisdom of God. Don't, don't sit here and be spurred into hatred and spurred into vengeance based on what the news outlets are telling you. Use Use the lens of God's word to see every situation. And then you know for a fact that however you react, it will be the right reaction. Praise the Lord. So pastor also talks about the condition of our spirits towards the very end. And I'll wrap up with this. You know, he said there are times that you can see as a, as a Christian, you can be afflicted with some illness or sickness. But he asked, what's the condition of your spirit? Because even if you get healing for that, if your condition is still the same, if the condition of your spirit is still the same, that illness could return. Because you didn't address the underlying condition. This is something that in the medical field we see as well. If the underlying condition is not treated, then something can erupt as a, sim like as a symptom of that underlying condition. So you don't, you don't just treat the symptoms you know, if you really want a cure, you need to make sure you're addressing the underlying condition. That's the fact of it. If you just keep treating the symptoms, it will just keep popping up. You know, it's like play whack and roll. You know, so you have to be wise about your spiritual walk. You know, the Bible tells you to take assessment of yourself. Where are you in your walk? What's going on? We talked, we've talked so much about this on this channel. Um, and I know that this is blessing you. Um, and I will leave you with the same things that Pastor Chris left us, and that's to not speak idle words. Your words should not be idle words. No matter what you're saying, you will have to give account for your words. So don't be joking about your life. I don't let people joke about me. I don't let people joke about my life. If you're saying something, no, 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 that's not me. No. Because every single word I'm going to give account for, the, every word that you release you know, the Bible says life and death are in the power of your tongue. So make sure that your words reflect the life that you want to live because they surely will. And I, I, I don't know how else to tell you that. But if you haven't watched this message, go ahead and watch it. If there's something that you felt like I should have addressed that you, you don't think I did, um, again, I don't have that much time to talk. So, um, I can only say so much, but I really hope that you were blessed by this, um, you all of all special. Remember in 12 days on October the 27th to October 29th, we have the biggest healing crusade of all time. I'm going to have the link there for you to register and share to other people that you know that need healing because their set time is here. The set time for a miracle is finally here. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I love you and God bless you. Bye.